to factor 32xy squared minus 18x squared y, that's number 52, we can divide both of these terms by 2xy. So that means we can write this expression as 2xy times 16y minus 9x. Now, this is the factored form of this expression that originally started in black. I was just putting in red what I thought I could divide both of these by. When we look in the parentheses, we don't have another common factor, so we must have factored out the greatest common factor, and we look to see if we can further factor what's in the parentheses. But since this is not the difference of perfect squares, we can take the square root of 16, 4, but we can't take the square root of y. So we can't express this expression as a difference of a base squared minus base squared can't be done. So this is our answer. On number 53, we have 2y minus 8 plus xy minus 4x. The first step is we look if there's a common factor in all four terms, and there's nothing that will divide into all of these. So then we split it up and look at the first two separately from the second two, and the first two both have a common 2. So 2 times y would be 2y, 2 times negative 4 would be negative 8. So we factor the 2 out of the first two terms, and then we add to that plus the common factor of the second two terms is an x, and when we factor out x or divide both of these by x, we have y minus 4. So if you distribute, you would return to the first expression. The advantage of this second expression is instead of having four terms, we have two big terms that both have y minus 4 in common. So if you factor the y minus 4 to the front of this bracket, because right now this plus sign glues this giant first term with the giant second term, so they both have y minus 4, so if we bring that out, 2 plus x is what is left in the parentheses. So in the end, this answer is fine, or we can express it as um, y minus 4 times x plus 2. Or, putting the x before the y, we, we could do that. But none, that is small potatoes. That doesn't matter. It's just the answer is y minus 4 is a separate factor from 2 plus x. So this would be fine on a test. All of these would be fine. Three different ways to express the answer. 54, which has 4a squared minus 8ab minus 3a plus 6b. Number 4 does not have a common factor for all four of these. So again, we're going to have to look at the first two terms separately from the second two. And both of the first two terms are divisible by 4a, and so when you divide by 4 and a, you get an a left, and when you divide the second term by 4 and a, you have 2b left. When you have a minus in the middle, you take out minus what's in common to the second two, which is just a 3, and then you have, dividing by negative 3, we'd have two negatives, positive a, divide by negative 3, you have negative 2b. And we got lucky, and we usually do, to have two giant terms connected with subtraction, and they both have a minus 2b as a common factor. So when we get that out of the way, we have a 4a minus 3 still left behind. 
So this is the factored form for number 54. Number 55, we have the trinomial 10r squared minus 9r plus 2. Whenever you have a trinomial without a common factor, if you have a number in front of the square term, just multiply it times the constant at the end, positive 10 times positive 2 is positive 20, and come up with two numbers that multiply to 20 but add up to negative 9. So to add to negative 9, the two numbers are going to both have to be negative to multiply positive, and then for them to total negative, we, negative 9, you have a negative 4 times negative 5 makes positive 20, but yet adds up to negative 9. So this is called the AC method, and once you find two numbers that do make the number in the middle, you split the number in the middle into two terms, two like terms to negative 9r, and we split it into negative 4r, negative 5r makes negative 9r. And now we've created four terms that in the first two, there's a common 2r that can be factored out. And in the last two terms, there's nothing. So when you have a minus in between, you go ahead and put a 1. And dividing by negative 1, we get 5r. Dividing by negative 1 over here, we get negative 2. And we're just hoping these giant terms both have a 5r minus 2, which they do. So you factor that out. And when this is brought to the front, 2r minus 1 is what's left. So this is the factored form for number 55. By the way, I talked about this one not being further factorable, but none of these are further factorable. I've been checking as we go, and I should have pointed that out because it's important to look. 56 is 7x squared minus 4x minus 11. So again, we do not have a number that we can divide all three of these by. So we have to take the number in front, the leading coefficient, 7 times the coefficient at the end, negative 11, and get negative 77, and come up with what multiplies to negative 77 but adds to a negative 4? And 7 times 11, if it's positive 7 times negative 11, that's negative 77, and that adds up to negative 4. So that tells me to split up this middle term, negative 4x, and make it positive 7x minus 11x. Then we can create four terms where the first two terms have in common is 7x, and there's a minus sign in the middle, and the last two terms have in common a negative 11. So dividing by negative 11, dividing by negative 11, I get x plus 1 as the common factor of these two giant terms that are subtracted. They both have x plus 1, so factor that to the front, and 7x minus 11 got left behind. So the answer in the end is x plus 1 times 7x minus 11. That is the factored form of this trinomial.